On the 20th of June 2019, I made a video titled Why Sheffield United Will Shock the Premier League in 2019-20. to Here I talked about the way that they play and why their tactic could spark some surprises throughout the season. Well, the video aged well. Sheffield United are now fighting for European qualification after a fantastic season under Chris Wilder. So now, I raised the question, can Sheffield United shock clubs and be a threat in a European competition? <laughs> Now at first it was between Europa League and the Champions League however with Manchester City losing their appeal it seems if Sheffield United are to qualify it will be in the Europa League. Both of them very tough competitions but it would have been a different case if it was Champions League football we were talking about as of course it has a lot more quality than the Europa League. So let's discuss Sheffield United as if they're potentially moving into a very exciting Europa League campaign. In my video a year ago I explained the tactics used from Chris Wilder in the Championship which has since become a well known fact to all clubs and fans in the Premier Premier League. But how exactly have they played with these tactics in the Premier League? Well the best thing about them this season has been their strong defence, becoming a team that are hard to break down and teams are struggling to score against them. Their first game back after the break was a 3-0 loss to Newcastle United, their biggest defeat since August 2018 against Middlesbrough in the Championship. So that says a lot about how they've restricted teams in the Premier League before the break. When out of possession their 3-5-2 becomes a 5-3-2 and what this does is make the blades a lot more compact, reducing space for the opposition and minimalising the amount of runs that can be made into dangerous areas. If the opposition have the ball in the wide areas, then the wing-back who's become a full-back positioning next to the central defenders will close in on him, as well as one of the wide central midfielders. What this does is create a 2v1 situation against the ball carrier. A good example of this came in their 3-1 win over Tottenham earlier this month. Son had the ball on the left where Sheffield United right-back George Baldock was keeping close eyes on him, but also right central midfielder Sander Berger came in to press him too. From here, Son decided decided to cut inside and cross it in, but as they were defending so deep, two centre-backs are on Harry Kane in the box and the ball is curling away from him, it's a poor attempt at creating an opportunity, which is what Sheffield United's compact defending forces you into doing. When holding their shape, the wide centre-backs are covering in the half spaces, where you usually get dangerous runs from opposition players. It means that even if a run is made behind the fullback, the wide centre-back is able to pressure the player while still having two centre-backs in the box along with another fullback and a midfielder. This is what has made Sheffield United a quality side in the Premier League. If you can defend and stop players from creating opportunities, then you can go on to push up the field and attempt to win a game. What shouldn't be forgotten though is the man in net, Dean Henderson. On loan from Manchester United, he's now in contention for becoming England's number one keeper and there's no surprise why. Before this season, he's had back-to-back -back player of the season awards, first at Shrewsbury Town in League One and then at Sheffield United in the Championship. And then he's gone on to prove he can do it in the Premier League, 13 clean sheets he's kept this season which puts him joint second. 27 goals he's conceded, which is the same as Manchester City's goalkeeper Edison. Of course, six goals have been conceded against Manchester United, but he's unavailable in those games. That makes it 0.82 goals conceded per 90 in the league, which is the second highest behind Allison. Alongside that, a safe percentage of 76.9% ranking him fourth in the league. His loan is yet to be extended into next season, but it needs to be something at the top of their priority list. If they're to stand any chance of competing in Europe, then Dean Henderson will be a huge factor in doing just that. Last season we saw Billy Sharp hit over 20 goals and it was clear that Sheffield United had a clear target when they were looking into the box. However, in the Premier League it's been a lot different with the whole team chipping in with goals and nobody leading the way with a lot more than the rest. In fact, the joint top goal scorers for them are two new signings, Lise Mousset, who joined from Bournemouth, and Ollie McBurney from Swansea, who actually was one of my recommended signings a year ago for them. He went on to join, and he's done fairly well. And we've seen the midfielders scoring too, Fleck with five and Lundstrom with four so far. Plus, it's not always been the midfielders looking for the striker to score like how it was in the championship. Mousset has four assists this season, with three of them coming in one game earlier in the season against Burnley. The third assist was an example of him winning the ball and then holding it up, waiting for Fleck to make a run forward to play it right in front of him and make it 3-0. And another against Bournemouth where he makes a run in the half space with the ball in between the fullback and the centre back, he finds Lundstrom in front of goal who finished very nicely. Examples of the striker drifting wider to look for teammates in the box 
Bradshaw coming deep to get the ball, displaying great strength with hold-up play and the vision to make a pass. And that's another reason why Sheffield United have become a hard team to face. Goals are coming from all over the pitch, not just one player that the opposition can mark and remove from the game. As Sheffield United look to next season though and eyes on Europe, it would be a big boost for them to have someone who could look to score 10 plus goals at this level. Whether that is Ollie McBurney, Lee Smousset or dipping into the transfer market to sign another quality striker is a decision that will have to be made. With qualification into a European competition, it's a massive reason as to why a player would want to join them. The success of the team this season and the exciting way that they play would surely be something that a player would want to be a part of. One player that's been heavily linked is Emmanuel Dennis from Club Rouge, a player who I in fact mentioned in my January transfer rumours video but at the time was linking him with Brighton. There is a lot of interest from clubs and his manager backed this up saying there is no lack of interest in Dennis, although there does not currently seem to be a concrete offer that meets the club's expectations. The Premier League is where there is a lot of room for fast attackers is an ideal destination. Possibly with the experience in the Champions League he has and wanting to stay in a European competition, he'd pick Sheffield United over another Premier League club. He'd add great pace to the team, a tricky player that likes to drift into wide areas and is strong, which comes into use when holding up the ball as a forward player. He's versatile too, being able to play anywhere across the front line, something that Chris Wilder will like to have in a new signing. Plus, Club Rouge play with a 3-5-2 and Dennis will usually play in the strike partnership, but has also played left wing and right wing when the manager has opted for different formations. In all competitions, he's scored 9 and assisted twice, not quite the 10 goal season I mentioned. However, it shows he has a good mix of scoring and assisting, proving that he suits the style of Sheffield United when needing to do it all, score, find teammates and work for the team. He likes the big occasion on the European stage, he scored twice against Real Madrid and assisted too, also scoring against Manchester United in the Europa League. A signing that would tick quite a few of the boxes for Sheffield United if they're looking to compete at a higher level. This time last year I was discussing Wolves going into the Europa League and how they would cope with squad depth in a competition known to have a big effect on player fitness. It was Burnley in the 2018-19 season who struggled in the league due to playing in the Europa League and Sean Dyke in fact admitted he changed the way that he wanted Burnley to play before going back to its key values. Wolves have been able to cope well and currently are still in the competition while maintaining a strong position in the league table. I previously said they needed to add depth, which they did. Pedro Neto joined along with Patrick Cotrone, Bruno Jordao, Leander Dendonka and Raul Jimenez being made on permanent deals, plus Daniel Podence joined in January. Now the new additions being Neto, Cotrone and Podence have all played a part in Wolves Europa League campaign with the other new addition Bruno Jordao being kept in the under 21s, but he did feature for 12 minutes in the Europa League. It's fair to say that Wolves did bring in new phases and use them in the Europa League, adding depth to the team and helping out with fatigue with the increased amount of games. This is something that Sheffield United need to learn from and make sure they use this transfer window wisely in terms of adding new players to the squad that can improve the first team but also rotation players that can help out when needed. They already started in the January transfer window, adding some European experience with Sander Berger, a fantastic example of signing a young player with good potential. A midfielder with high work rate that's been able to bed into the team this season and will be a great asset in the squad next season. They need to continue with signings like this in other positions, maybe Dennis will be another, but also at right back where they only have George Baldock now, a centre back where they had Retzos on loan, he didn't feature in the Premier League for them but he was a backup if needed. Transfer business will of course need to be done to bolster positions throughout the squad. I'm personally really interested to see who they can persuade to join next season. There's no reason as to why the tactics can't work in the Europa League, I back Chris Wilde and the team to make it work a year ago and I think the same will happen next year. My quote from last year's video was, it may mean they pick up points against teams you won't expect them to, as the opposition won't be able to defend against the fluidity that they offer. And the same can be said about the teams in the Europa League, they won't have played against a team with such tactics, therefore meaning Sheffield United can surprise people in Europe too. Back in March, I asked my community in Discord the exact question, can Sheffield United shock in a European competition? Kalea said, honestly, unless they get better players, Players, I don't see them going far in Europe. Other teams will figure them out and stronger quality will surpass Sheffield in stronger tournaments. Sander Berger is a great signing and if they can continue to make signings like that, I could see them winning the Europa League. This is interesting as it's something I mentioned in the video. Signings like Sander Berger need to continue as this is what gives them an increased chance in the competition. This summer will give us a great insight into how the Blades can compete in the competition. See, Blythe made a bold statement in saying Europa League round of 32 is where I see them going. Good tactics and good players, but they'll be not out by teams like Bayer Leverkusen or Napoli. I think this is a fair point and going out to teams such as these will be very respectful and it shows how far they have come. I'm sure the team and fans would love a trip to these kind of stadiums, so something that they won't be too disappointed.
disappointed about. Gus said they can definitely be a threat for other teams, but overall I don't think they're strong enough to win the entire competition. Like we just mentioned, the bigger sides that come up in the knockout stages might be a bit too much for the Blades to handle, but you never know in football. Next is AL saying they will surprise most, but could get to the last eight if they get lucky draws. If not round of 16 at best, getting knocked out by established European clubs, so similar to what C. Blythe said. Flaming Articles said they could potentially see them becoming a Bournemouth, a solid PL team. I'm not sure about Europe though, does any club in Europe play like them? If they are, I feel that if they meet those kind of clubs, they'll get outplayed in their current state. But I also feel like Wilder is great for them, he's their most important person at the club. If he stays and the club meets their needs, whether it be signings etc, the team might get far. What they say about Bournemouth is true, not the Bournemouth we've seen this year, but previously they've been a quality team in the Premier League. Person on the internet said straight up, definitely not. I think with the squad they have, even if this season is so very remarkable, I don't think they will replicate this season even in the Premier League, let alone European football. Besides, I don't think they will want to do too well and they will probably focus on the Premier League. However, with Sheffield United and Chris Wilder, anything can happen. Actually, let me rephrase that, probably not. I'm sure he'll want to do well, that goes without saying, but it's just being cautious with how the squad is used. Rotation between players will be important. Then last C. Blythe said, it'll be like how Burnley had that miracle season just more entertaining. Which is true, an underdog in this sort of competition is great to see, then they have the bonus of an entertaining style of play. Get involved and comment your thoughts on Sheffield United's Europa League campaign, how far can they go? I recommend that you don't miss out on future videos. Subscribe to Route 1 and like the video if you did enjoy.